Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you Tesla's entire master plan. I think in times like this, when there is a market drawdown, it is good to have a voice of reason from someone that have actually done a lot of time researching about this company. So today, I'll share with you why I really invested in Tesla. I don't really like people who have permanent bias on Tesla, be it bull or bear. Even though my price target is high for Tesla in the 2030s, for now, the situation looks very, very bad. But I just want to show you the long-term roadmap for Tesla. And I weigh everything in terms of probability and I think that Tesla has the chance to get there and let me explain to you why. So to me, what sets Tesla apart from other companies is that Tesla have in-house manufacturing that is designed to be very efficient to reduce the time cost and to control the cost of producing a single unit of product. And if you take a look at how they design their Tesla factory, you can see this is optimized for maximum efficiency. Once the manufacturing facilities and the system is built out, it is easy to copy and replicate the system. I actually get to know about Tesla by reading Elon Musk's biography back in 2015 to 2016. And back then they were still trying to ramp up Model 3 production and this almost bankrupt them. And back then I was about 20 to 21 years old. And to me that period of time was more dangerous to be invested in Tesla because anything can happen and Tesla may really go bankrupt. But fast forward now, the risk of investing in Tesla has significantly lowered. And I just want to share with you guys, the reason why I really invested in Tesla is not because of Tesla lowering the cost of transport. Yes, the cost of transport can be lowered through electric vehicle and having autonomous driving. But I myself feel that the real change that Tesla is going to bring is that Tesla is going to advance us to a new age an age of abundance and they will do so by driving down the cost curve of batteries so that the new energy infrastructure is not just renewable but it's much cheaper for civilization every 1% increase in consumption of energy GDP will increase by 0.59% the initial batteries that you use for EVs have to be more energy dense hence we have to use lithium ion phosphate or nickel manganese cobalt you can use even cheaper elements for battery storage because it can be bigger and it can be stationary and batteries is the limiting factor once you are able to solve the batteries problem cost of energy will go down and whenever human civilization discover a new way of harnessing energy and make energy cheap, we will advance to a new age. And this is why I feel Tesla will play a big role in this decade. And what is better is that they are the ones working on batteries, they are the best at manufacturing, and they are the ones working on real-world AI solving AGI. And this will bring human civilization to advance into a AI age, aka age of abundance. So right now, I'm not going to lie, the short term looks very bad, not just for Tesla but every other companies. And I think going forward, a lot of companies are going to bankrupt in this 2022 to 2023 recession. The cost of lithium for lithium iron phosphate, the cost of nickel for nickel magnetic cobalt. Lithium and nickel is going to play a significant role in the cost of expense. And for Tesla Q2, it is not going to look good because Shanghai is forced to stop production and Tesla spends some of their cash reserves holding Bitcoin. And now the price of Bitcoin is not helping Tesla either way. So I presume when Q2 result come, it's going to be maximum FUD or maybe it's priced in already. So it's hard to time the market and I'm not going to try to time. Unless I see some discrepancy in price where I feel that it is good to sell some core option. To me, I feel that it's good to sell core option on my Tesla stocks for these next three to six months because things are not going to get better and to me, the risk reward is worth it to sell core option for these next three to six months. Okay, now I'll just play a clip that I recorded overseas and I think that clip explains 90% of my conviction in Tesla but there is probably going to be some repeat so just be patient. Okay. So why is this the Tesla decade? I'll explain to you why. I have a bakery business with my girlfriend and she handled the operation side of things, I, ha I handled the business side of things. When I handle the business side of things, I use the first principles approach and I ask myself, how do you make a manufacturing business profitable? Tesla is a manufacturing business. Ma. So I come to two conclusions is you have to, whatever you do, you know, whatever you do, you have to minimize the time cost to produce a single unit of product. So you have to lower and make it, you have to churn out the product as fast as you can. And the second thing you have to do is to control the cost of producing a single unit of product. So that's the two things you have to do. And if you do these two things well, you will be then profitable. So when you're, once you're able to do that, you just have to focus on scaling production as much as possible until you reach volume production. Then you just scale as fast as possible so that your factory works non-stop 24-7 and it churns out products as it goes. Dude, maybe let me build up on that a little bit. Yeah. So you know, as we talked about before, this three or 500 terawatt hour of batteries, yeah. most of it hasn't been built yet. And the factories to build them have not been built yet. Yeah. So, and we're only at a single digit terawatt hour today. Yep. And I think this could imply there's a lot of options and room for innovation. Um, so, you know, we hear a lot about sort of this cookie cutter situation of that's just keep building more of the same giga factories. Sort of in your leadership of Tesla, how do you see this scaling, just being, as you mentioned, pragmatic and scaling up, but also constantly looking out for ways to improve? Can you maybe comment on a couple of exciting directions you're thinking, how you can change the next set of factories you build? Yeah. Mining yeah. processes. Sure. I mean, I think, I think the, the kinds of stuff that we've been focused on within the scope that we've taken on to date, which has been kind of like cathode and up, 
you know, we've really been thinking about the typical things that you think about when you're making bread. Like the last bread factory could do a thousand loaves an hour. I want the next bread factory to do five thousand loaves an hour. Like, what do I do? Do I like change the chemistry and like a little bit more baking soda, a little bit more magic pixie dust, and it just mm -hmm. rises faster? Or do I get a bigger oven? Or you know, is my mixing going from like a thousand liters to ten thousand liters? Is that how I make five thousand loaves versus thousand? You know, that that's kind of like things manufacturing engineers have done for a while, and we're doing that with. You know the bigger form factor cell and the more efficient assembly lines and the slightly different electrode processing that we're doing. That's all about how do I make that that same factory do 5,000 loaves an hour, same footprint or smaller, do five times to ten times more than it did before. But that isn't that isn't the fundamental bottleneck of the next 10 to 20 years of of, of battery uh, uh, growth. It, it really is the raw materials because, as I said, we've been in the coattails of everybody else's raw materials. Manufacturing is a fixed cost business. Your variable input is your factory space. This is fixed cost. Your labor is fixed, space is fixed. Your only variable input is your raw material. So let's say you reach volume production. The problems I face is when you churn up so much products, then where do you sell all these products? So personally, even though we had a very good bakery business, we still have to find ways to market our product. And marketing in a sense is still like manipulation, make it look enticing, make it look, make it look good, make, it, make people feel like they want to buy. But then that's the thing I realized about Tesla is that even though they are just focusing on scaling production, there are months of backlog orders and months of raving fans wanting to order Tesla cars. And again, we boil down to do these two things. Minimize the time cost of producing a single unit of product and controlling the cost of producing a single unit of product. Tesla produces a Model 3 at 10 hours. They churn out a car at every 10 hours. Volkswagen takes 30 hours, about three times the speed. Ford and GM is three times less profitable than Tesla in producing a single unit of car. So actually, in the same amount of time, Tesla is about nine times more profitable than le legacy automaker. And then in manufacturing business, it is good to have vertical integration. So you take the same amount of raw material and then you try to do different things. So fundamentally, it is batteries that is the core raw material. You just use the batteries and then you produce as much as you can or you take from other people. You take this same raw material, you make into cars. Uh, fully maxed out already, like no more demand for car. You take the same batteries, you make dedicated robotaxi. And then robotaxi will run as a service and this will have recurring revenue and it is automated revenue and you can take away the steering wheel, take away the unnecessary stuff to make it even cheaper to manufacture. Then if let's say uh, robotaxis are finished already, even, no more demand for robotaxi, you take the battery, you deploy stationary battery storage. Then my, and even if all this stationary battery storage is finished already, you have to deploy into the, the same expertise of manufacturing and the same raw material, the batteries and use it on the Tesla bots. You, do you see like all this seamless vertical integration using the same raw material cost? How profitable will this be? Car companies, they cannot even figure out how to make EV yet. Let alone taking this battery and making it into solar or let alone making it into a self-driving car. Okay, so that's why I'm so bullish. The manufacturing itself is really very bullish. This is why they have 32 to 33% gross profit margin every single car. Car is worth $1, 33 cent to 34 cent is gross profit. And the thing about Tesla is it, it has multiple fixed cost businesses other than multiple vertical integration. So fixed cost business is the cars are fixed cost. The batteries are fixed cost, you know? And uh, FSD is fixed cost. Cars and batteries, they are manufacturing. Ma. This space is fixed cost. The labor is fixed cost and the machinery are fixed cost. The raw material is the only variable input. So the same thing is for FSD. You once, you once you solve FSD, once you solve AGI, it's about scaling and having a network effect. Your initial cost is not gonna go, it's not gonna grow by much. So this will result in the widening profit margin, okay? Widening profit margin, your web. And Tesla is projected to grow 50 to 60% year on year. And if expenses is not gonna follow the same, it will cause profit to be growing even faster than that of 50 to 60%. So this is compounded every year and, and where will Tesla's valuation be, you know? It can continue to grow 50% year on year for the next three to four years. Then how about, what if they solve FSD after that? What if they have robotaxis? What if they have stationary battery storage? And what if they have Tesla bots? This is why I feel it's good to be a net buyer of Tesla. So that's why I don't mind selling put and buying call. So again, where will Tesla go in the future? This world economy, world GDP, is about $90 trillion. And 85% of this $90 trillion economy is run by fossil fuel. So if you don't know about this, energy is the backbone of the economy. So just, just like your cost of transport, your cost of logistics, your cost of energy, these are the things that actually move the economy. They are the reasons why uh, economy prospers. They are the most fundamental basic, such as like your cost of food. All these are important things. So I did a study on this and I noticed that every 1% increase in consumption of energy, it will result in a 0.59% increase in GDP. So why don't we just do that and make everyone prosperous, you know? 
just consume more energy and make everyone prosperous. But the thing is, we can't do that when 85% of our current infrastructure is relied upon fossil fuel. Because if you do so, if you were to increase our demand of fossil fuel, this will cause the supply of fossil fuel to dwindle dramatically. And if the supply of a finite fossil fuel were to dwindle dramatically, what will happen is the cost of energy will skyrocket. And this will be unsustainable and nobody will be able to afford to pay for it. So you cannot actually scale the world economy or the world GDP by increasing consumption of energy. And then we ask ourselves, what are the costs behind fossil fuel? If let's say you want to extract oil, you must first have an oil exploration team to find where the oil is. You must have machinery to distill and frack for the oil. And then you must have petrol bowsers to transport all these oils to a storage tank. You have to build infrastructure to store all these uh, tanks and then you must have the fuel pipeline to transport all this. And then you must have uh, petrol stations. Then you must have land for these petrol stations to, for you to pump the oil. So actually the cost of energy right now is very, very expensive. But if you think about it, the economics of a clean energy economy where you just where Tesla work on lowering the battery cost through volume production using lithium ion phosphate or nickel manganese cobalt the more they produce the more they have people mining all these things and then they will start lowering the cost curve of a battery significantly they take a battery storage and then they pair it with the, the solar panel tapping the energy from the sun or having wind energy and then you don't have to pull such a long electrical wire from a substation from all the way there's burning natural gas you can just do it rural areas you can you can just park it the house the shed and then just solar panel and batteries you don't have to pull such a long electrical wires so actually your cost of infrastructure is very low okay, so when you lower this cost curve for batteries and then you start deploying them as stationary battery storage what you will do is you will you will significantly reduce the cost of energy but you first have to replace this 85 percent of 90 trillion economy that is run by fossil fuel clean energy have to replace this entire 85 percent of 90 trillion infrastructure and then they can have deployed more than that because the energy is infinite and it is renewable you literally can tap on energy source from anywhere and so what this does is it will lower the cost of energy and it will cause an abundance of energy and energy will cause so cheap that when you increase the energy consumption GDP will increase and this is how things will be and whatever you manufacture will be cheap and when you have access to cheap cost of energy and abundance of energy the world GDP will expand it is a matter of when you know it's a matter of when so this is a very important part that tesla will play expanding this 90 trillion economy or replacing this initial 90 trillion economy and then expanding it from after that so again what i i see tesla bot you know theoretically don't have to sleep don't have to eat don't have to take vacation don't have to have any benefits it would just make sense for employers to to buy tesla bots instead of hiring human workers let's assess if tesla have the ability to manufacture Tesla bot. Again, I feel that Tesla bot is one of the best vertical integration. Vertical integration in the sense that they have the manufacturing supremacy. They are the best in manufacturing. They have the best batteries and they are the ones solving artificial general intelligence, AGI, solving the real world AI, the mapping of the real world. If they are able to solve FSD for cars going at 120 km or 100 km per hour, why can't they do that on a Tesla bot that is going at 4 to 5 miles per hour. These are the questions I ask myself. And in that kind of economy, uh, automation, clean energy economy, literally this is the two biggest thing, you know, automation and clean energy. Tesla is the one doing these two. And in that kind of world economy, how much will Tesla be worth? Again, I emphasize that in industrial age, we, our world GDP double every 6.3 years. Industrial age, every 6.3 years we double. So theoretically, in another 6.3 years, we probably double to 180 trillion. So machine intelligence revolution will, I assume, will be faster than that of industrial age. So we probably double in less than 6 years. So let's say in 12 years, we double 2 times. From the reference point that Tesla bot is ready, every less than 6 years, we will double world economy. So in that kind of economy, let's say 90 trillion, 180, 360 trillion. How much will Tesla be worth? That is my question. If you are able to mass manufacture cheap Tesla bots that are able to replace labels or add-on to help do useful work. It will be the age of abundance. It is about understanding the impact of Tesla and, and this is why I'm fundamentally so convicted in Tesla because it has such a good vertical integration and they have the best and brightest engineers and they are playing the infinite game. Infinite game in the sense that everyone is focused on the mission, the company's mission instead of fighting against each other in corporate and I just want to take as reap as much benefits for myself, take high salary, don't care about the shareholder and shareholders just want to take their dividend. So this is not how Tesla works. And that's why 
I don't mind selling put option on Tesla and buying call option on Tesla. So this is just bonus. I just share with you guys. You guys want to watch, just watch lah. You don't have to watch everything. Yeah.